You're listening to the Bathtub Refinishing Podcast. Powered by Bathtub Guys Refinishing. We discuss the refinishing industry, interview owners and operators, and give tips to business owners and entrepreneurs. Now, here's your host, Daniel Montalvo. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bathtub Refinishing Podcast. How's it going, everybody? So, second take because the camera decided to shit itself (laughs) the first time, but it's okay. It happened. Back with Carlos from Making's Renovation. Hey, everybody. And we were talking a little bit before, you know, the malfunction. First podcast of the new year. Yes, sir. A lot of exciting things going on behind the scenes. Me, a you, lot. Jonathan, a lot. doing some stuff. Um, you've joined many a Facebook group, which is exciting, I think. Uh, that's going to be big. Shout out RCN. How do you feel about that? About like, you know, do you, I know we were talked a little bit about it off air, but how are you feeling about like people coming to you, asking you questions, stuff like that? That's funny. So uh, as I was actually explaining to you earlier, ever since I've joined these groups, everyone has seen, they, they've been sending me DMs and it's cool because on a, I like helping, but I, there's nothing more rewarding than that. So especially when it comes to, I like to talk about techniques. I can sit here and talk to you about techniques all day long. So that's just my little, you know, that, that's when I get excited and start to get all boring and technical. But people like to hit me up, ask me a bunch of questions, and I love to provide. So I so, always give people my phone number. See, this is for those people that always say that I'm, I never have anybody technical on. All I ever do is talk about business. There you go. I have somebody on who likes technical shit. And, like, it's not that I don't like it. It's just that for me, I just, I didn't, I wasn't in that part of the business. yeah. That much. Yep. So the stuff that interests me is that brand building. The other side of the coin. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. That, that's where I actually flake at. So I'm more good on the technical side. Mm-hmm. I can talk about that all day long. But when it comes to the business side, that's where I always need to sit down and talk with you. So that's always, this always helps. Yeah. And then also epoxy table that you did for us. Love it. I'm sure everybody's gawking at it right now. <laughs> and it, it looks really good on camera. I got to say does look good. Looks um, good from here. And it looks really good in person too. But <laughs> it basically, I was like, you know what, Carlos? I want something that looks like the bathtub guy's colors. Do your best. And honestly, better than what I expected. There's a lot of little details to it too, which I like. You know, you're looking around, you see like, you know, a little silver flake there, a little a little yellow kind of greenish going there. It looks really, really cool. And if you go to bathtub guy's uh, Instagram and stuff, you will be able to actually see details because he took a lot of videos of it too. So yeah, so I, I uh, helped film some content for it. I oh, yeah. edited, it, edited it. It's hard to say that, right? <laughs> so I edited it myself, and then he also had uh, Liz, his wife, take some video, edit it. So there's a couple different edits out there. Oh yeah. Uh, but the important thing is getting his name out there with the epoxy stuff, getting him some more work with that stuff, and and obviously like, you know. We're collaborating on other stuff, but he really likes epoxy. He does a really good job. So any help that anybody needs with stuff like that, he's your guy to go for that. Which, by the way, interesting. I was telling you that I was talking to the guy from Bathart, but today on Instagram, I saw that Bathart posted, it looks like they're showing people how to do epoxy. No way. But the thing is, correct me if I'm wrong, Christian, I don't know. I don't know if they even offer epoxy. I like didn't know themselves, that they did either. I've never seen them post it. At yeah. least, maybe they did, or maybe it's something that they're starting to do. So, are they offering classes? It looks like it because okay. they're, they're epoxy. So, you know how uh, when when you're doing the natural stone, people bondo the side to make it look absolutely. I yeah. saw them do. I saw them do that in a picture. Nice. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. I have to follow them. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I I I honestly, I've talked about it before, but like, he seems like a busy guy. He's not a bad guy. He's a cool guy. And and every now and then we chit chat about stuff, but I'd like to have him on one day on the podcast. We've talked about that too. Yeah. It's mostly been timing stuff. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure one day we'll get him on. But I've met him and their field supervisor, Elliot. They're really cool. They're, they're cool guys. Nice. Uh, you know, but, you know, people are busy sometimes. Absolutely. You know? Especially I'd, when you're trying to get your business to the top, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that, that was interesting because, you know, about two years ago, when I first tried Stone Coat myself, I said, like, 
even me who's not done something and can make something look way better than it looked before. Yeah. Just by like fucking around with epoxy. Yeah. Like I could see where the trend is, right? I could uh-huh. see where it's going. And it's going to like this is the future of this stuff. Um It's really nice. It's durable. It can take a beating. I think I had a hammer here and I hit it earlier, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> it, and also, you know, for like kitchen use and stuff, you know, five hundred degrees is pretty good like as far as yes you know for for heated surfaces even with this high gloss stuff even if you don't use the ultimate top coat yeah. it still looks good it's plenty scratch resistant very scratch resistant um, absolutely it's just good stuff honestly you know the less multi-spec we got to do in the future the better just because it, the multi-spec is fine but it just it feels look, outdated it's, it feels it, outdated yeah yeah like when i do it and i still do it i do it very much i've done it forever I'm always trying to push clients into the epoxy. If I if I could look, if I'd be cool with like let's base coat something, let's use one of those silver metal flakes, and then let's epoxy the top. That would look it would look like granite. Yep. Or it would look like uh like um what's this other stuff called quartz. Yep. Right. And Um, easy application. And an easy application, way cheaper. So Midwest put out a poll today. Whoa. And. It was really rare. They put it up a poll on Instagram, which they almost never post. Actually, I just followed them, and yeah, they were asking what material should we try. And you know and cover? what I told them? What I told them, you guys need to do something about the countertops. Like I would like some some a different type of application that gives you like a marble look Absolutely. is what I said. Absolutely, and that's they what need it, to keep up with the times, bro. Marble is in, bro, and it's only gonna like I don't know, bro. The the flex stuff. It just looks like Section 8 apartment housing. Because, unfortunately, a lot of refinishers have touched those places. Uh, and, uh, and Myself included. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, it just, that's kind of associated with, like, kind of mid-tier. Whereas, like, if somebody has expensive taste, they have a, a nice house, they're not going to want a multi-stone stuff. They want something nice like this. They want high gloss, you know, shiny and, and dirty or exotic pores. The, the, exactly. If it, like, me personally, obviously... I didn't have my wife, right? But personally, if it was my house, I would want something crazy like this on my counter yeah. with colors and everything. Yeah. I like it off the wall. But I get it. But that's part of the reason why I wanted to do it here because I can't do it in my house like that. But yeah. here I was like, do something different, do something crazy. We could still do something crazy but nice tones though, exactly. in the house. So. I, I don't want I, – like I didn't want subtle for this. Yeah. Right? I, like – Crystal was like, oh, you should just do like a marble, whatever. I was like, ah, I want something kind of crazy for the podcast. It just kind of catches Something that stands out. Yeah, yeah it yeah. looks a lot cooler. Yeah, yeah. So, and then, and, and we've talked about it, potentially doing some videos on some MDF and trying different patterns and stuff out. That stuff would be fun to do too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but overall, what would you rate this project? Like as far as, I know there were some ups and downs with the primer. There was some stuff that happened. Ooh, but good thing we caught it. Yeah, you did catch it. That's we, good. We caught it, and uh, and we fixed it. So, and I'll explain to it. We ended up using a primer. I laid it down, came back 24 hours later, and it was peeling. And we were literally getting ready to start pouring. So the fact that that happened obviously slowed us down. But we caught it. We knew exactly what to do. We ended up peeling off all of the old paint. And I have video footage for this. Uh, and I was like, wait a minute. No, no, no. So I, we went, we grabbed better primer, which luckily was here at the shop. We didn't have to go anywhere. And then immediately we did a scratch test. Once we saw that that scratch test was good, we went ahead and we continued. And that's exactly where we f- saw it the first time we did the scratch test 24 hours later. And I started realizing, oh my God, this primer isn't holding. So it must've been some old primer issue. Which mind you, this is like. A job he was doing for the podcast table, not like a counter and stuff. He also, even though it was not that serious of a job, he took the extra precaution. Have to. And made sure it came out right. So if my name is on it, I have to do that. Yeah, and I'm I'm glad, bro, because it's like we were talking about with the whole grout situation. Once we go. (laughs) Yeah. Oh for every anybody who doesn't hasn't received a DM from me. Be lucky. I've DM'd like 30 different refinishers. We're having an issue with grout. People complaining about grout lines. We've never done grout here. We usually caulk it. It's starting to become a problem. I don't know if it's that the caulking just isn't as good as it used to be, but we're having shrink problems with the grout or with the caulking. And and then, you know, people complain about grout lines. And so 
it goes back to what we were talking about with that, though. It's like, if your name is touching it, at the end of the day, kind of the responsibility falls back on you. Yep. And, it, and you want to provide good customer service. And yep. I always go back no matter fucking what. Yeah. Um, and, you know, some people don't believe me. Like, I get asked in the group, like, oh, how's your lifetime warranty work? Bro, if somebody really thinks it was me and they call me in 15 years, kudos to them, bro. Yeah. Like, because we're going. Because <laughs> I'm gonna, exactly like, but you look realistically, most people move in three or four years or whatever. That those things are gonna happen. There's gonna be less people that call back than than do. But for those people who do, here's the thing: most times people are legit. Yep. Like you know when they're bullshitting, when you're bullshitting, when they're bullshitting, you could work with that. But most people are legitimately concerned. Either they didn't have the right information to care for the thing. Or they don't know what grout is, really. They don't know how grout works. So when you tell them after the fact, after you see all these black lines everywhere, hey, it was the grout. We don't do that. All they think is that you're full of shit. When someone's calling us mm -hmm. because their tub or their tub and towel looks like crap, uh -huh. and they're like, listen, it looks like crap. We need you to come over here and refinish it. They're not going to understand Oh, well, if the, if the grouts are missing, which, by the way, almost always we paint white, let's be honest, almost yeah. always, and almost always, I, at least with my experience, we run into not white tub and tiles. Beige so that then biscuit, when you, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So then when you paint it, it's it just sticks out like a sore thumb. And no matter how good of a refinishing job you've done, that grout sticks out further than the nicest, shiniest tile you could ever leave. So a client will absolutely... Complain, especially as they're paying. And, and let's and, be honest. And they're justified because... They are look, justified. This is the rule of thumb to life, guys. You want to treat people how you would want to be treated? Absolutely. If you paid seven or 800 bucks, what we're charging over here for tub and tiles, man. You want and, it to be perfect. And, it, and there's bad grout lines. It looks... to If I was a customer who didn't have any other experience or didn't know any better, I would think that they, it was just a half-assed job too. Yep. You can't blame them. I can't. You're hiring somebody that's paying premium, mm -hmm. and they're expecting that when you're walking out, that's it. There's no more. It, there's no explaining to them. Oh, by the way, if it looks like crap, you need to go buy some silicone. And the, even even though it's in our disclaimer, yep. I feel like crap when I'm talking to a client explaining that, and I feel half-assed when mm -hmm. I'm saying that out loud. And I just I'm like no. And literally ten times out of ten. I will go ahead and just silicone it to make them happy because I don't even feel right saying that. Yeah, no, it, it, it's like at the end of the day, bro, we're all human. We're in the customer service game as well as the refinishing. But look, and I've said this before. If you think that the refinishing is the only thing that keeps you busy, it, that's bullshit. It's the customer service. That's how you Absolutely. set yourself apart. How you answer the phone, how you talk to people, and how you deal with problems. Absolutely. One of the reasons why Bathtub Guys has 142 five-star reviews, bro, it's because... In the area, there are people arguing to go back for a chip repair, you know. And and the thing is, it's like when they're warranting it. And, and that's the worst part. Exactly. <laughs> and if you have a warranty, man, and like I get it, customers mess things up. But my rule of thumb is, if I see, for example, the bath mat thing, I always tell them, I'm gonna fix it this time for free. But after that, the warranty's void. Yep. And the reason is because it's all it's written on the warranty. It, it's already compromised. Yep. I can't do much about it. I'll fix it one more time. At least the client's aware. Yeah. And, and, so and they're like, dang, they're, they're going to come and fix it. Exactly. That's good. And, and the thing is, they can't really say like, oh, well, I didn't know about that because it was written in the warranty. If they didn't read it, that's not my fault. Yeah. Um, but everybody gets a warranty sheet, all this stuff. But if you're far fighting with somebody about going over there and just touching something up or recoding something, it's like, fine, do that. But just know that the reevaluate re your customer service at yeah, that point. Because the repercussions are going to be greater. You're going to get. Worse reviews. People are going to start questioning your warranty, especially if you're a lifetime warranty person, like specialized refinishing and some others. Like, if you're not going to go back, just don't offer the lifetime warranty then, bro. Like, it, be upfront about what you're actually offering. Exactly. And look, if you are not going to go back, even when a customer makes a mistake, that is bad business. I learned that the hard way. Like, you cannot be super, super stringent on the warranty when it comes to regular people. Now, giant corporations that are worth millions of dollars, that's different. Yeah. A hotel, you have a little bit more leeway there because really like you, repairing things. A in lot of things come up in hotels. And yeah. repairing things in volume is different than p fixing Nancy's fucking tub down the street. Exactly. Also, 
Here's another thing. Fixing somebody on residential, any residential job, most of the time you can tell them, hey, I, I, I'm busy, but next month I'll go over there, and they're cool with it. They're super cool with it. Like them. right now, the last few warranty calls, I'm putting them all for the week that I'm on vacation yeah. for my guys, and I'm just like, they're cool with it. They're cool waiting four or five weeks. Yeah, because they at least know. that One, it's reputable. They mm-hmm. already know the company. The company's been together since 93. So they're going to be like, okay, there's no problem. I, I, I see the reviews. I know that they did good when they came anyway mm-hmm. between customer service and job. That's fine. Now, the only time I don't do that, though, is if it's, hey, it happened last week or it happened this week. Yeah. If it's that, it's whatever's next available. Yeah. But for like, hey, I got it done a year ago. Yeah. And something's going on. I'm like, yeah, of course we're going to take care of it. And yeah. I also, look, we've been doing this for a while. The product shouldn't fail. Yep. And we've seen it. We've literally gone to jobs where it's only failed because of lack of taking care of it. Mm-hmm. And we'll try and peel at it. It yeah. won't come off. Exactly. We're doing the, what's supposed to be done. Yeah, exactly. And that's another reason why Like, I, I know that most people, we go over there, we say, hey, like, you got to do this, this, and this to take care of it, and they're going to go and do it the right way. Absolutely. And every now and then, one slips through the cracks, but you tell them, like, after this, no more. And I they're actually, cool with it. I just went to a job where it, was, it wasn't it was even our fault. Yes. And it, 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 it was a Second leak. time. Yeah, second time. That's how nice we are, guys. Please don't take advantage. But we went a second time. There was a stain the first time around, like, about maybe six months after we did the job. Mind you, this job was done maybe, like, two years ago. Uh, the stain was not our fault. Somebody like dyed their hair blue yep. and left this huge streak. And then they called us. We still showed up and cleaned it for them. And mm-hmm. then they called us about last week. They had a leak. The leak was leaving rust. And I their, went over their there. Overflow was rusting too. And I, exactly. And I, I mean, I, I told them straight up, I'm like, and obviously in the most professional ways, Hey, you know, unfortunately this, this isn't an actual issue from us. Like, but we still did it. Like, mm-hmm. We still did it. That's that's where the customer service is at. And you know what? Client paid us. And they, they still paid us. And they wrote a five star review, by the way. And they wrote a damn okay, they did. perfect. Yeah. So awesome. it's you know, these things look <laughs> that five star review, he, you gotta think about things differently sometimes when you're in business. That means more and, than money. And I'm telling you this because you're pushing and pushing and pushing. There's gonna be those moments where like, damn. This is really tight with the money right now for me to go back. What you got to do is line it up, put it down a little bit. If it's something old like that. Absolutely. Hey, I could get there in two weeks. Put a job for that day so that maybe that's in the area or something that you could have Seth prep while you're doing it. Exactly. Doing the repair. And that way it doesn't, it's not a big burden because if you don't got anything going on and all you're getting is warranty claims, it feels. You're losing money at that point. Yeah. And you're, (laughs) it feels like you're suffocating. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. I know the feeling. So, but that. That, bro, please write us a review because of this. This this wasn't really like this, and I would really appreciate it. Bro, that review is going to pay for itself, bro. Like, you're going to get so much return on, on a good word like that. And the fact that you came back out, that is, bro, most people don't do that. They, they look at the phone. <laughs> I worked for someone that would save the number as possibly might call back. And whenever he would see the possibly might call back, he'd straight up would ignore the phone call because he knew that call was going to come back and he didn't want to go and fix it. So it, it, when you work with people like that, it just irks you in such a way that you you just know, I can't be like that. And Bro, we're, we're in, at the end of the day, before tub refinishers, before anything else, we're in the customer service game absolutely. because anybody could paint a tub. Like... It, Not everyone has good customer service. Exactly. It, 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 look, you could train a fucking monkey how to paint a tub if you if you give it enough time. And not to say it's going to come out good or anything, but like a lot of people, as long as it looks pretty and white, that's enough. Yeah. What really separates you is the rest of the stuff. Because we've talked about this before, but everybody in town says we're the best. Everybody in town says we have chemicals that other people don't. Everybody says that we have the best warranty. Everybody says that you're going to go with the other guy and it's going to be bad and then you're going to call me anyway. Everybody thinks that that's like a, a line. Yeah. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. You know. I got him good. Guess what? Yeah. The fucking guy that they're talking to said the same thing about you. Yep. At the end of the day, the difference is how you communicate with the customer, build a fucking relationship with them, Absolutely. make sure they're comfortable with you and get them to trust you. Yeah. 
all the other shit, if all you do is talk about yourself, they're not going to trust you, bro. Yeah. You got to speak to them. That's it. And you got to speak to them in a manner that you're not selling to them. Yep. Like you really got to, you got to humanize yourself with yep. people. Like I understand you have your company, you need to sell and, and it, absolutely. And it does not end after you get the sale. No, it doesn't. Because what you did when you went back to Nicole's house, that is branding. That is selling. Yep. At the end of the day, if something else happens in another house somewhere, you think she's going to call somebody else? No. She's going to call us. She's going to call us. Especially that we've gone there twice. <laughs> yeah. And, and none of them were our fault. Yeah. No, but yeah. still, look, that's how you build customer service. No. And, and that's how you do things the right way, man. You Some know? people focus on how to run the company. Absolutely. Some people focus on the quality. Absolutely. But aside from those two, man, if you don't have good quality service, customer service, you're, you're just you're just another one of the of those companies, man. Like customer service is where it's at, especially in this day and age. I literally just spoke with a client and they they expressed to me, man, customer service in this day and age is not what it used to be. It's it's a scarcity and it's it's rare to actually see someone care about their work. It's almost very easy for someone to be like, oh, you must have done something by and then not answer anymore. It, it's just you, you don't see that anymore, like that good quality customer service. And when you do that and when you really focus on your quality and your customer service, you're going to go above and beyond than anybody else. And people will absolutely notice that and they will refer you till the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And and. Like, let's break down what customer service really is. Like, customer service is not, you know, it's not bending over to the will of anything. It's, like we said before, being treated how you'd, how you'd want to be treated. Absolutely. We're all humans. You think that you're going to get someone on a gotcha and they're going to be okay with it? Like, oh, yeah, well, we emailed you the warranty and you didn't read it, so go fuck yourself. It's <laughs> like, bro, we all have lives. We all have emails with a thousand fucking emails that are unread yeah like sometimes things happen the majority of the people will follow the rule sometimes they don't and for those you make an exception and you tell them next time there this is not gonna fly exactly but the crime is not going back yeah because if you don't go back you're just re-legitimizing that you were never gonna go back anyway it just it feels to the customer just like it would feel like if you were the customer, oh, what the warranty is fucking worthless because they're not even going to come back out. They don't even give have the respect to come out, come back out and look at it. And at that point, if you're already going to go look at it, might as well touch it up. Right? You might as well. You're already there. Yeah, you're just make them fucking there. happy. Yep. I, 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 like people get so hyper focused on like, oh, you know, I'm losing money. Guess what? You might not have a business if you're not providing customer service. It's, that comes with the territory, yeah. people. Now, obviously. If you did a tub last week and, you know, I don't know, they dropped a fucking paint bucket on it <laughs> and got freaking dry, uh, they got drywall paint all over it. And they're like, hey, I need you to come strip this and redo it over again. Different story. That's a different story. That's clearly, it's going to require all day. That, yeah. That's, that, we'll work something out. But if somebody calls you a year later and they're like, hey, it's starting to peel in this, in this corner and you don't go back, you're kind of a dickhead. And mind you, I, I'm actually going back on a job site that I just did this past Monday because debris fell after the fact. And I'm just going to go over there just to take care of it for them. I'm going to give yep. them a quick wa wax and buff. And they're they're happy. They already left us a good review and everything. And it happens sometimes, guys. It's just, it's really important. I feel like people misconstrue what customer service is. You got a lot of these old school guys talking about like, you know, I'll never go back if they mess something up. And it's like. Like cool if you really feel that way, but I don't. I don't think that's. I don't think that's really necessary to to do all that. Like you're being extra. You're being extra, and I feel like you're using a lot of excuses to not go back. Like I get it. We all get that frustration, but like he said, at the end of the day, dude, it's your company. And it, what, do you want your company to be known as like the the excusers, or do you want your company to be known as the exceptional guys? Like. The guys that no matter what pulled through, like people really do. Even the worst customers, even some customers that have had horrible experiences, they have still referred people to me. 
Yeah. And I'll be surprised. I'll be like, wait, who referred you or who referred you to me? Oh, so-and-so. And I'm like, wow, it just I a, remember that experience. It, it's just better to be known as the guy who always comes back, even if there's a mistake, than the guy that, oh, I'm too good for mistakes. Yeah. So everything is their fault. Yeah. Those people never get ahead, bro. Oh, yeah. Um, we get ahead. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then these big companies, too. Like, you know, you got to think of companies like Amazon and shit like that. Amazon does not even care if they sell you a defective product. They don't even care to get it back. They're just like, we believe you. you a new one. Yep. We believe you. Here's the money back and a new one. That's why they overtook eBay by a whole bunch and, and they came out way later. And that's why eBay. Walmart is shaking in their boots to this day because they, <laughs> they're scared of what's about to happen. Oh, yeah. You know, they think everybody, everybody thinks that they got it all figured out, but it, it goes, it goes deeper than a lot of people realize with all this stuff. So, um, I'm just letting you know, like three seconds ago, the camera went out, but it's okay. What, I'm continuing with the logo screen, and then I'll, I'll figure that out at another time. It might be overheating. I don't fucking know. Okay. It happens sometimes, but the audio is still going and stuff, so. Okay. Um, but yeah, man. Unfortunately, too many people take themselves a little too serious. They, you know, look, if, you, if, you, if your business cannot survive warranty claims, don't offer one. Exactly. Give a give a limited one year warranty. Yeah. At that point in time. Exactly. Uh, fluctuate with your prices because I I've seen people out there also. Tub and tiles for five hundred bucks. Oh yeah, I'll uh, call them up by name. A bath pro in Orlando. Yeah, Why yeah. you do this? It's like, but you're, you're hurting yourself in the long run because you're forcing everybody to go down to your prices. But let's be honest, you're not pricing your jobs correctly if you do that. And I'm not specifically talking about that company i'm really more talking about anybody in general if you're starting a company and i sent this to you yeah on that group you saw the dude that's offering hotels 150 tubs 250 tub and tiles i sent you that a couple days ago Ridiculous. i couldn't believe it i could not believe it i'm like oh my god this guy's doing it for free materials yeah. is that's what materials cost. Yeah. He's never job costed in his life. No, you could tell he's probably brand new off the boat. He just like learned the trait and he's already trying to offer himself. And obviously hotels are going to take this, uh -huh. you know, they're going to want to take advantage. Yeah. You, you can't pass up a good deal like that, especially if the guy's good. I don't know if he's good or not, but probably offering not. $150 for a tub and three fifty. Uh, listen to oh. this, Carlos. You said something that I want to touch base on real quick. You said, you're forcing the, us to come back to, down to your prices. Not necessarily. Here's what true. here is what happens when somebody. God damn! I want to touch on this, but I want to use it as a clip. So I want it, the camera for this. God damn it! This is good. Let's pause it then. All right. I'm gonna, let's end this little snippet here. We're about thirty minutes in. We're gonna continue on. I'll get the camera thing situated because I really want to make this in the clip. This is gonna be good. Yeah. So we'll we'll circle back. Give us a second, and we'll we'll be right back. All right. You've been listening to the Bathtub Refinishing Podcast. If you liked what you heard, be sure to keep up with the Bathtub Guys on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Or visit bathtubguys.com for more. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>